Yeah, nothing can be found to have an independent nature. Is um, it's one of the key points from the training, as you mentioned, and uh, the way to approach that key point is um, not to try and think about it, because it's very hard to kind of to think your way into understanding or really comprehending completely what that means. Um, but the other approach is to um, really getting what that means is, is first of all with the, the simple practice of, of short moments. And so this is the simple practice that's offered here. And um, the suggestion is that just for short moments, you, you stop describing everything that's going on and you notice what remains when you stop describing. And right now, there's an intelligence that's naturally present. There's something that's looking through your eyes, that's hearing through your ears, that's experiencing everything you're experiencing. And in the Balance View training, we just call that open intelligence. Um, another term for it is awareness. And so, um, with this suggestion that for short moments, you can just stop describing whatever's going on for you, because there's always something going on, there's always something to describe. So just stop that description and recognize that this intelligence is naturally present. Recognize that the intelligence that you identified when you stop thinking for a moment, stop describing, that alertness, it's also present when you start thinking. And it's the basis of all of your thoughts. It's the basis of all of your experience. And in that recognition, what you're doing is seeing that whatever you are experiencing, and this is an instinctive recognition, which means it's not something that needs to be thought about. Whatever you are thinking or experiencing or feeling or sensing or perceiving is nothing other than the dynamic energy of this awareness, of this open intelligence. And in that way, what you're seeing is that nothing can be found to have an independent nature, not as an idea, but as a direct recognition. So for example, um, you can take a short moment and stop describing, um, well, you can do it right now. So whatever you're looking at right now, whatever you're thinking, you can just stop describing, recognize that the basis and your ability to look or to recognize or to experience or to think is the same open intelligence that it always is. And in that way, you see for yourself that whatever you're experiencing, whatever you're looking at, whatever you're thinking, cannot be found to have a nature separate from this open intelligence. But the way to gain certainty in that is to repeat this short moment. So just a short moment of stopping describing, recognize open intelligence, and actually the place that you recognize it is in your experience. So you're not stopping your experience to recognize it, you're recognizing it as the basis of your experience, whatever it is. And the way that you can become certain in that is by repeating it. So for example, um, you can take a short moment um, when you're feeling really happy, you know, when things, you know, things seem to be going really well and um, you've got pleasant circumstances around you, you know, with nice friends eating good food or whatever it is, you can take a short moment and recognize that the only way you can experience those happy sensations is through this same open intelligence. When it gets really interesting and juicy though is when we begin to apply this with things that we don't like. Um, so when things don't seem to be going so well and we get a certain rush of energy or emotion, um, that we learn to describe in a certain way as, as negative or, you know, something doesn't go the way we want it to and that brings up all kinds of sort of thoughts and emotions and we begin to describe and spin off into those. And then to put this same practice, the same uh, short moment into use there. So rather than spinning off into the stories about what's going wrong, we can again just stop describing and recognize that all of that experience the thing going wrong, our thoughts and feelings around it, are also nothing other than the dynamic energy of open intelligence. And a term for that is data. So all experience, anything we can describe or perceive, we can simply call data. And this data is streaming through open intelligence, just continually streaming in this seamless flow. And um, it's just a habit that we have learned that we need to try and control that and manipulate it. 
So that manipulation and that control usually goes along the way that you know, I want to accumulate more of the positive stuff and I want to avoid the negative stuff. And the problem with that is it's actually impossible. And the unexpected events kind of uh, illustrate that quite dramatically. They you know, think we can control our lives and get everything in place and set them up how we want. And then something goes completely wrong. And if we're basing our well-being on having things look the way we want them to, then we are completely screwed. Because you might be able to hold that... That's a technical term that we use in the training. But you might be able to hold them in place for a while, but at some point it will all just collapse. There's no way to hold our experience in place, to hold that positivity in. And in the same way, trying to avoid negative things and, and trying to get rid of them, they will just keep coming back. So what do we do? Well, it is about putting the practice of short moments to the test in all of these circumstances. And um, the whole, your question about things going wrong just, just reminded me of like, like how much of a victim I used to feel um, to my circumstances. And it could be little things that are going wrong. I mean, it was great the way you shared about the car not working and the bike breaking down. And, you know, you shared it in a really sort of calm, calm way, which is amazing because, you know, those are the kinds of things that just used to send me into a rage, you know, just frustration of this sense of, like, feeling wronged by life. And, you know, it's, it's me, it's all against me. It's all, you know, why is everything against me? And... And so it was really powerful to um, put the training into practice with those thoughts, of, of really seeing and allowing the thought, um, this is so unfair, you know, why has this happened to me? Why has this happened to me again? To recognize open intelligence as the basis of those thoughts. And in that way, giving up the right to be a victim of those thoughts, because I saw that none of them could be found to have an independent nature. So what that meant was, in that instinctive recognition, just by stopping the describing, recognizing open intelligence as the basis of that thought, just for an instant, I saw that I didn't have to give that thought the power that I thought I did. So I didn't have to go around behaving like I was really pissed off by everything that was going wrong in my life. And it was really clear from the way you asked it that you already see that. And what happens is, is that from that vantage of relaxed openness, you just see, well, what, what's the solution? What, what can I do instead? Now my car is broken down, the bike doesn't work. You still manage to get here somehow, which is amazing, because what it shows there is, is the practical application. And this is the open-ended knowledge and benefit creation. So when we just rest naturally, we allow our mind to rest naturally, just for a short moment, by stopping describing. So your mind is naturally present, you don't have to think your mind into being. It's the basis of your experience always and already. You just need to relax for a short moment and allow that to be obvious. So when we rest naturally there, everything is already seen completely brightly. It's your mind that illuminates all of your experience. It's that which knows everything you know and experiences everything you know. So when you just rely on that and rest naturally, allowing it to rest in this native condition of complete openness, then you just see everything more clearly. And that seeing of everything clearly means that you can see what will be of most benefit in this circumstance. Like, how can I respond to this situation that isn't the playing out of um, certain thoughts and feelings, <coughs> like feeling wronged in a circumstance? Because I've done that. Um, and sometimes I still do. And it's really, really painful. Um, because there's no um, capacity to see what will be of most benefit. All that happens is a reinforcing of the idea of me as a victim to my thoughts and my emotions or my experiences. But as soon as I relax and I allow them to be as they are, things open up. And the most magical thing that opens up... Um, really is this loving capacity to see what will be of most benefit. And my experience gives me so much opportunity to practice because the habit of collapsing into one thought or one feeling and trying to make myself a victim to it, so telling all of the stories about what it means and how it relates to me and my past history and my personality, so strong. You know, it's so strong, that habit 
that this experience, my life, this is my training ground. This is where I practice. It's in my relationships. It's in my um, thoughts and feelings about the people that I live and I work and I interact with and that I meet on the street. So everything that I experience, this is my opportunity to rely on open intelligence, to allow it to be as it is, to allow the mind to rest naturally and to allow this experience just to keep seamlessly flowing without needing to adjust or manage or control it in any way. And this is so different, like so different from the tight control that I try to have over my experience. Like as soon as I felt um, wronged by a situation or, or wronged by life, I needed to do something about that feeling. And that would come out in lots of different ways. I would, you know, I'd, I'd just, I, you know, I'd be like mean and grumpy just to everyone, just to show that, you know, that everyone knew that I felt wronged. And it was like, I mean, I, and I was the one that actually suffered most from that. But somehow I felt that, you know, if I could bring other people into my suffering, that would give me a little bit of relief. Um, or, um, like we were hearing in, in the video, so that would be a good way to indulge that feeling of being wronged. You know, I'm just thinking about it and I'm playing it out in the way that I speak and relate to others. Um, another way is to kind of avoid it. So to avoid situations where um, I'm, I might have that, the fear that that will come up of feeling wronged or feeling hurt or feeling... Um, uncomfortable, you know, things that we told ourselves that we shouldn't feel. And so avoiding those situations or those people or those relationships and, um, and, it's, and that's a really limited way to live. And actually, I, again, I'm the one that suffers from that, of putting limitations on the actual, the way I want to live, which is, is complete freedom. I want to be completely free to be me and to contribute the best of me in all circumstances. So if there's certain things that I'm avoiding, and really what I'm avoiding is my thoughts and feelings about those people, places or things. Whilst I'm still playing that out, there can't be complete freedom. It's impossible, because I'm avoiding certain things. And then there would be the replacing, and this is more subtle. Um, so this is when you get slightly more savvy about the way that your mind works. And you begin to see that you know, when something unpleasant comes up, like a difficult feeling or an uncomfortable thought, you can kind of change it. You know, you can force yourself to try and convince yourself that actually, no, I'm happy, I'm not bothered by this. Or um, another one would be um, a kind of intellectual approach of this doesn't have any power over me. And um, it, it, it kind of works for a little bit because you sort of fortify yourself and you're, okay, it doesn't have any power over me. But the thing that bothered you is still there, still bothering you. You haven't actually resolved it. You've just kind of put a, a, a temporary plan in place or a temporary solution. So whatever it is that you're kind of um, replacing will always come back. And it will always keep coming back. And, um, and you'll always have to keep replacing it. So this is a, just a continual sort of tension that can be subtle or more overt. And, and so in this, the, the, the way that we would suggest here for you to try out is instead of any of these things of indulging, avoiding or replacing, test out for short moments, allowing it to be as it is. And, and it's, just, it's so radical because for me, the thought of feeling wronged, um, particularly by a person, was something that I was so used to um, like just indulging, like, you know, somebody said something to me that was hurtful, then I, I, I would find myself playing out like years later. You know, like, like 10 years later, I'd suddenly find myself thinking about this and, you know, how terrible it was and how dare they and, you know, just all of the stuff that went along with it. And, um, so instead, when that thought comes up, maybe it's about something that somebody said 20 years ago and it pops into your mind and you start sort of going on about it to yourself and what it means. And actually, rather than doing any of those things, stop describing, allow it to be as it is, recognize that the basis of that thought and that really powerful feeling is open intelligence. Like the direct experience of that thought whilst relying on open intelligence is the only way that you will be free of it. 
And free of it means that it can be there and it has no power to affect your capacity to be an open-ended knowledge and benefit creator because it is just simply part of this grand unified display of open intelligence. It cannot be found to have an independent nature. You do not need to do anything about it. And to really get that instinctively, so deeply relaxing, so deeply satisfying, so deeply freeing, because the struggle is over. The struggle with trying to control our experience. Just that tension of, of thinking that there has to be something more that I need to do or get or understand or achieve and, and, and then I'll be okay. We recognize this already okayness just by stopping all describing and resting naturally for a short moment. It, it's, it's, it's the opposite of what we learn. We learn everything else we learn is what do you do and what do you need to do with your thoughts and your emotions and your experiences. Or we don't even learn it at all and we're just so caught up in them that the idea that you know, we could do something with them or that we are doing something with them isn't even ap apparent or obvious to us. We're so busy doing things with our experience we don't recognize that we're even doing it. So the first step is to recognize that, you know, what is the cause of all of our complications and tension and suffering? Like nobody makes us suffer, no matter what the situation is. And for me, that's been quite, like, quite a shock. It's like, oh no, <laughs> ah. <laughs> damn. <laughs> I was so used to like blaming everybody for my feelings and then also blaming myself. If there's nobody else to blame, then it must be my fault. But actually, I can just stop with that description too and rest naturally with that thought. I can give up the right to be a victim to even blaming myself. And that's really beautiful, because there was nobody that was a harsher critic of me than me. And nobody. Not even close. So it is this really radical but subtle shift in how we're going to use our minds. And it's a moment-to-moment -moment choice. And, and I also love the gentleness of knowing that I always have this choice and that there's this incredible support network there that empowers me to see that I do have this choice. And the big shift for me came with doing the 12 Empowerments, which is one of the foundation trainings in Balanced View, where I got to look in, in real depth and detail at the ways in which I had victimized myself through my thoughts and my emotions and the, my belief systems about what I needed to do about them. And it was amazing to look at them in this sort of systematic way and to look at my relationships and see, well, you know, what, what's playing out here? Why, why am I not able to show up in this relationship in an easygoing, relaxed way? You know, why do I always feel this tension with this person? Or you know, why is it this person that I, I just can't stand being around, even though I, I, I love them dearly? Or you know, what's going on there? I've got this intention, I want to live a good life, I want to be able to relate with everyone with this openness and love. Like, why can't I do it? And the 12 empowerments just gave me these incredible insights of just looking in detail at that, and not, not in a vague way, not in like, oh yeah, but it's all open intelligence and it's all data in open intelligence, which it is, but to take our power of a laser-like precision of our intelligence to look at things with incredible clarity and apply that to relying on open intelligence and looking in real depth and detail at our lives is just incredible. Because you know, our minds are not only wide open and beautiful and clear like a, a clear sky, but they're also laser-like and precise in their ability to see exactly what is going on. And it's that capacity that you train up and um, and what's more, it's coupled with this incredible love. Because that's the other thing that we've always, always, always really wanted, is just to, just to be able to love and to be able to be loved. And, and that opens up too, because the ability not to allow that is simply emphasis on more ideas, more data, more belief systems. So those relax and soften too. So it's all good. <laughs> really, it is. I mean, life, life can be all good, even when the descriptions are not what we would like. And that is real freedom. 
And um, it's humbling to learn that as well, particularly when the descriptions are really not what we would like. And then to see that same capacity to allow them to be as they are, just increasing and increasing. Um, and sometimes particularly when they're challenging, you know, the situation is challenging, it's really not what we want. And then you see the, the depth of the suffering that you can go into, or the beauty of the relief that is always available. And the training and everything that's offered here does nothing but support you to see that you have that choice.